Hi everyone. Let's continue our journey with integration by parts. In case you haven't checked out all the action that happened in part 1 of integration by parts, I'll link it for you in the description box as well as you can get that by clicking on the i button. Let's get started. Today we are going to explore a very interesting form of by parts. That means if you come across a function which has e to the power x, remember only e to the power x, not 2x, not x by 2, not x cube, nothing else. So, and you find the function plus its derivative in the bracket, then what needs to be done? So, how does this use by parts? The first thing that you need to do is separate out the integrals. Having done that, retain this one as it is. Don't touch this. And apply your by parts to the first integral. Now you may wonder that I don't know what my fx is. Then how do I categorize it as first function or the second function? If you remember your rule which was i late, e being the exponential function always comes in the end. So irrespective of whatever is your fx, I can put it as the first function and this one becomes second. We apply by parts, so we say this is fx as it is into integral of ex dx minus derivative of fx into integral ex dx and this one is to be copied as it is. Now the first one gives us fx into e to the power x. This gives us integral of f dash x into e to the power x dx and this one is copied as it is. If you have any confusion about how I applied this formula, your answer lies in part 1 of this video. So, you can and then I add a c in the end. You can clearly see these two factors getting cancelled and what we are left with is simply fx into e to the power x plus c. Now for a 1 or a 2 marker, the moment you recognize this form or at times you might have to do a little bit of calculations here and there to bring your function to this form, having achieved that, you may directly apply it. However, for a question which is for 4 marks or more, you must show the entire process. I'll just discuss with you with an example. Look at this simple question. So this time it's pretty clear. You have e to the power x and you have the function plus its derivative. So for a one marker you may directly give the answer as it will be sin x into e to the power x plus c. However, if you have to really show the entire process, then you are going to separate these terms out, e to the power x into cos x dx. Now this one you are keeping as your f dash x, so do not touch this. And here you know sin x is the first function and e x is the second. So this becomes sin x into e to the power x minus derivative of sin x which will be cos x into integral which is e to the power x dx and this term is copied as it is plus c. You see these two terms getting cancelled out and you have the answer. Looking at the second question, the moment you see e to the power x form along with a complicated looking function, try to reduce it to this format which is function plus its derivative. Here it's again simple. The moment you separate these out, 1 upon cos square x gives you secant square x plus sin x cos x upon cos square x would give you tan x. And once again you've created the function and its derivative in the same go. We separate the terms Retain this one as it is and integrate by parts the first function. 
So this becomes tan x into e to the power x minus derivative of tan x is secant square x into integral of e x which is again e x. And there you go. The answer is tan x into e to the power x plus c. Now you need to make the decision for lesser marks you can directly write this otherwise show the entire process. Let's look at the third question and reduce this part to this form once more. So for that your denominator is x minus 1 whole cube. Let's try writing your x minus 3 as x minus 1 minus 2. And now the moment we separate this out, this becomes 1 upon x minus 1 whole square minus 2 upon x minus 1 whole cube. You have your function which is this. And if you try to find the derivative of x minus 1 raised to power minus 2, it is minus 2 into x minus 1 raised to power minus 3, which is precisely over here. So show the process and in the end just check out the answer should be this. Look at this question. How do we tackle? Well, it tests your trigonometric skills. So all you need to do is apply some trigonometry formula here. For instance, your sine 4x could be written as 2 sine 2x into cos 2x minus 4 upon this could be reduced to 2 sine square 2x. So on separating out the terms, And this is e to the power x into, you can cancel these two out, this one gets cancelled, we are left with cot 2x and this one gives us minus 2 cosecant square 2x. Once more, this is the function, this is the derivative. So, and now let's apply by parts to the first integral. This one gives us cot 2x as it is into e to the power x minus derivative of this which would be minus cosecant square 2x into 2 into e to the power x into dx minus the second function as it is. Once again you see these two terms get cancelled and your final answer is It's time for the DIY. Please take down the question. And remember, I'll discuss the answer in the next video. It's time to discuss last video's DIY question. That means do it yourself. So this was a question that I asked and you had to apply by parts. But this wasn't quite simple. It involved a small trick. So have a look at that. What I do is I multiply and divide with cos x and then we further split your x squared as x into x. So this becomes x into cos x into x into sec x. I am taking this up. And now Separate them out as x into secant x and the remaining function as x cos x upon x sin x plus cos x whole square. Once again, all I did was I multiplied and divided with cos x. Then I split this x square as x into x. With one of them I take cos x and with the other one I take x upon cos x which is x sec x. I make this as my first function and this as second. This is a super trick here. The moment you do this, now let's start solving the question. You take this integral separately and this is actually the application of your integration by substitution. 
which I did in my previous videos, you can check out the link in the description box in the playlist on integration. So now if I take this function or this denominator as some t, now just see the derivative would be here you apply the product rule. So sin x plus x times cos x, the derivative for cos x is minus sin x dx is dt. This gets cancelled. Your x cos x dx is dt which is right there. So i1 becomes dt upon t square. That means you are integrating this one. This gives us the answer minus 1 by t plus say c1. But we will be incorporating this c right in the end. So that means as of now the answer is minus 1 upon x sin x plus cos x. Now let's apply your formula for by parts. So it is the first function into integral of second which I can write as minus 1 upon x sin x plus cos x minus derivative of the first one which shall give us this is again the application of product rule. So secant x plus x time sec x tan x into integral of second which would be minus again upon x sin x plus cos x. This term only looks complicated and you feel how you are going to integrate it. But just wait and watch. Let me take this separately. If I take secant x common from these two terms, we will be left with 1 plus x tan x upon x sin x plus cos x. Now all you need to do is reduce your secant x and tan x in terms of sin and cos and see the magic happen. So this is 1 upon cos x upon 1 plus x times sin x upon cos x whole upon x sin x plus cos x. This gives us 1 upon cos square x into cos x plus x sin x whole upon x sin x plus cos x. This term gets cancelled and you are only left with secant square x. So now the final answer would be this entire term plus integral of secant square x which is plus tan x plus c. This is the end of integration by parts. Do try out a lot more questions and share your feedback with me. I would see you with the next video. Till then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.